All right. So today we've got a Camaro Z28 uh, S-Class tune. So I just want to go through the tune for this review. Um, first, let's look at the PI. All right, so you can see here, uh, obviously it's S-Class. Um, it's strong in handling and braking. That's decent. I mean, uh, nine for acceleration in this class is probably a little above average, uh, maybe average, and it's a little low on speed. And you can see it's got um, it's got full aero. So, you know, despite this thing having almost 700 horsepower, I mean, the engine is kind of a beast, but it's also pretty heavy. So that balances out. It's, uh, you know, it's just quick enough to keep up with most traffic on tracks, but its strength is really in its handling. So let's go to the tune. Just kind of go through each of the settings. I run 28 just generally. Um, I found that's kind of where good grip is. I think I ran the same thing in Forza 4. Gears standard it's not that fast i don't know how accurate this top speed thing is but it's i it's about that fast in races so you know i have it tuned for that and it's okay um alignment settings it's run of the mill i kind of run these settings on most s class street kind of cars so yeah this works pretty well Roll bars, this is pretty close to what it, actually no, that's not true. In default, it usually has the front up way high at about 30 or so. So I just dialed that back. This is kind of in tune with the general balance of the car. <clears throat> it's pretty square, but I do like a little stiffness in the rear end just to help it rotate a little easier. It's kind of the same situation with springs. Actually, the springs are square, basically. And um, I have a ratio for how I set the springs based on the balance of the car and um, and the uh, overall weight of the car. So, you know, if there's a certain corner weight at each wheel, then I have the spring rate set to a certain ratio for that. I'll probably go over that in another video but you know long and short of it is suspension I found in Forza it's not I mean it makes a big difference obviously especially the shocks which I'll get into next but it's not that huge of a difference it just kind of fine-tunes the balance if you stay within a reasonable range the shocks you know kind of standard fare it's heavier, so the settings are a little higher, but you know, it runs fine. It settles into curves and doesn't do anything crazy. Arrow, I, I usually leave this at default. Um, it just feels right out of the box. And I don't want to curb or kill too much top end, but I do want it to be effective. I'll probably play more with this at another point to see how much it actually affects cars. But out of the box, it's usually good. I feel a difference with it in default versus off. Brakes I have set a little towards the rear and I like to have the braking force um, usually around 115, between 110 and 120. I tried to go, well, when I first started with this game, I went by the braking distance it would show, but once I took off ABS, I found that I wasn't getting the braking power that I wanted. And that braking distance thing, like I'll show you now. See how 60 is 111 now? If you go down to about, if you go down to, let's say 73. Yeah, it'll say, oh, 
look how much shorter it is you get 20 feet shorter stopping distance i found in the game it in the game it doesn't work that way what the braking pressure does is it kind of sets how quickly the brakes activate obviously you can go too far and it'll just lock up but i found you know between 110 and 120 on most cars is a good balance and i have it skewed to the rear just so that you know the car is very neutral um and i like to trail bake brake a little bit so having that rear kick out before the front helps <laughs> now the diff i might have to make a video on differentials but long and short of it is um this thing has a lot of power but it doesn't have too much torque but either way um i like to run a high diff just because i've started racing with traction control off i do everything raw now i do traction control off and uh stability control off stability control sucks and um and uh no abs so everything's straight up and yeah with almost 700 horsepower on tap you definitely want to keep the back end coming out straight a turn coming straight out of turn so that's why the acceleration set high and then on the deceleration um deceleration kind of controls lift off over steer so the higher you have that um the more stable the car is and i think this has a bigger effect on handling than than the suspension actually so yeah i, I run this uh somewhat high on this so that's the tune for this car i mean um it works pretty well i'll, I'll show you a benchmark lap through the full um brands hatch track and um yeah you can see what the balance is. I'll talk through the lap on that. All right, so now let's go to Brands Hatch, do a quick hot lap. Now, this uh, this car, it's pretty good around here. I, I'd like to do a lot of benchmark testing here. Um, through that first blind right, good, nice, easy to trail brake. Um, the good thing about this car, like I said, it's got almost 700 horsepower and uh, I think over 500 foot, foot pounds of torque. So even though it's 3,000 pounds, it's got enough uh, power in the mid-range to uh, keep it a gear high. So this is usually a third gear turn, but you know I'm able to keep it in fourth and actually get really good drive out of that corner. I think I have it geared a little short too which helps. I, I don't use this for um, high speed stuff because it has a good uh, handling rating. So do this fast, fast, right. I probably could have shifted to fourth there, but again, I just wanted to keep it stable without um, traction control. That's a new thing that I'm doing. Coming through this blind right. Again, in fourth, I would usually be in third there. Here I shift down to, oh no, I keep it in fourth. Yeah, it, it just got down a little too low there. Um, but yeah, and then coming into this uh, kind of blind fast right, this is key because uh, it helps you get good drive down this main sort of straight. Um, okay, and now we're at Indy. This is a lap from a race. Um, you can hear I hit the limiter there breaking into this section nice and stable on the brakes no uh tail wiggle action going on um and then through this triple right complex it took me a while to get right in this race um and i couldn't get settled for some reason but by the end i was in my rhythm but yeah it's good through there easy to put the power down and maximize the grip um, through here again pretty good coming out of this slow right I would usually again have it in second but this thing has got the gearing and the torque where I can keep it a little higher now we're coming into this fast left uh, closing up on this student driver 
this gets a little weird. I'll show you guys. You'll see what happens. Like, you can see there, we're kind of in the same space. There's no collision there. It's weird. Um, but yeah, through this high speed, right? The arrow is pretty good. It's keeping it. Yeah, he just went through me. Really, really weird. I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah. So through Indy, it was it was good. Nice high speed stuff, low speed stuff. Can't complain. So now we're at another lap in a race at uh, Road Atlanta. Um, through this right, it's good. Puts the power down easy coming out of that that uh, turn. Through the chicane, my favorite part of this track. It's nice and stable. It's not as uh, nimble as I would like, but you know, I, I tune for stability over uh, agility, usually. Coming out of there, I got a little too happy on the gas, but it stayed controllable. And then breaking down into this double right, nice and stable, really easy, no lockup that nonsense coming out of here it took me a while to learn how to do that turn without traction control in second but I do like to get down to second because uh, just you do get better drive in a lower gear from there just have to be patient coming down the straight again it's not the fastest uh, I would say a fast car here could probably get to like 180 or 190 this trap uh, probably at 175, I think it was. I come through that chicane. Usually cars get light over that crest, but uh, it wasn't too bad. And then through this fast right, I was, uh, it was nice and stable. So a 124 and a half. For me, a really good lap around here is a 123. So it's all right. I mean, that's a good time for a lobby. So now we're at Bathurst, uh, Mount Panorama, the full circuit. I think there's only one circuit here, so or one version. Um, this track does favor cars with a lot of speed, but there's that back section with, uh, you know, where you go up, I guess up the mountain and then back down through that kind of tight uh, curvy section. So you should be able to make a good time there. Coming up to this blind double left, um, it's good. I, I went a little deep here. I should have stayed closer to the left rather than letting off and coming out and then coming through this right nice and stable in fourth again i'd usually probably take that in third but this car's got the gearing and the mid-range to pull um yeah coming through this section through this fast left probably could have been more aggressive there since i hit the wall um and now we're into this fast downhill section I call it the falling down the stairs section because it's kind of just controlled I mean you gotta obviously control the car but you can it, things can really get away from you through that little section with the tight walls and everything so that car this car um, even though it's wide it's really got good handling good grip so it was fine through there uh, especially now that I know this track a little better so we're headed down the straight. I think I do bump into the limiter coming down here. Yeah, you can see I just hit the limiter. Uh, so it has a few more miles per hour in it, but breaking down into the chicane again, probably you do this in second, but um, it's the gearing and the torque uh, allowing me to do that. I go a little deep into here. That was probably a good half a second loss there. But yeah, I mean, it's other, you know, other than that, it was, it's good. It's good around the track. So can't really complain. Cool. So just to close this video out, um, I do like the Z28. It's not a uh, leaderboard killer. It's definitely not that kind of car, but um, it definitely gets the job done. What I like about it, you know, it's got, it's got good power. It's got good acceleration. Doesn't really overwhelm the chassis too much. The V8 sounds good. Um, you know, despite it being a muscle car, technically, 
It's got really good handling, both at low and high speeds with the arrow. Um, what I don't like about it, it could be faster on the top end, I guess if you... I have race tires on it, so if you swap those out for um, sport tires and then gave it more power, but then it would be harder to control. You might lose some drive. But better drivers than me can get more out of cars like that. So it's a trade-off. But overall, I think it's a good car. Give it a try. Um, you know, and, and go from there. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what I can do to improve. Thanks, guys.